Hey guys, we're back with another video for you. Uh, it's a crazy world. We're trying to get these shot and get, get some videos on here for you. But anyway, we'll try to do better. I want to show you some things today that just, well, that can cause you to lose performance in your motor and you, you just overlook them. They're easily overlooked. One thing is if you're running a double pumper carburetor or any carburetor, first thing you want to do is make sure have somebody set in the car, mash the gas all the way to the floor to make sure you get wide open throttle. A lot of times, you, people miss this. It's, it's commonly overlooked. And then, if it is, you know, you know you got enough travel and everything, and then you need to open the carburetor and just look and see if the primaries, when they're straight up, or the secondary straight up like that. That's another thing because this link here, you bend this link on the double pumper to make it come in the secondaries quicker and stand up. I guess to get them straight, you have to bend it usually. Usually I've never seen them. When they're straight, you're going to be like wide open on the front and the back's going to be right about there. In other words, it's not going to be in line with the primary. You need the primaries and secondaries to line up together. So this link, you can bend it either way, uh, down, up, it doesn't really matter. It's what controls the secondary opening up far enough. All right. Now that's one thing that will cause loss of performance. I mean, you can lose, you can lose quite a bit right there. I've, I've seen it over and over. Now I want to show you something about regulators too. This is a typical old style Holly regulator. It has a spring in it, a diaphragm, and it's supposed to stop the fuel pressure at wherever you dial it in. On the on the little nut here, you can bring it down to raise it up and back it off to lower the pressure. But these are bad about creeping. The fuel pressure will actually start creeping up a lot of times. Sometimes it's due to the pump. Sometimes it's just the regulator won't hold it. Now this is a regulator, which is a great regulator, guys. This is what you want, really. You really... If you can afford it, this is what's known as a bypass regulator. The fuel actually comes in here, feeds all four. This is set up for a dual four barrel application, like on a tunnel ramp. But you could use block them all. You could do use it on anything. It's an expensive regulator, but it comes in here through the inlet, comes in here and feeds all the carburetors, and after they raise the pressure, it picks that diaphragm up and lets it run out the bottom here to return to the tank. They just won't creep. I've never seen one of these creep because it's always the pressure when it gets to a certain level, it just bypasses out this bottom. This little nip on here is made for wide open throttle. You can run manifold vacuum to it and it'll actually raise the fuel pressure with no vacuum. In other words, if you want to set it up with vacuum on it from manifold pressure, and then when you accelerate it, it'll probably jump up a few pounds where to give you a top end if you needed, if you was running low on fuel delivery, which my God, if you run low on fuel delivery with this thing, I don't know how, I, it'd take a lot. It had to be a pro stock motor probably. But these, you know, these run off the carburetor. You could block this side off, just use this. And they make these smaller. They make them with the vacuum, without the vacuum. The adjustments right at top, basically same way as this. And and like I say, it comes in here, it feeds out to the carburetors, keeps the pressure even, and then it just bypasses. So it is the best all around deal you can ever have. I, I would have me a fuel pressure gauge on one of the fuel logs on the carburetors. Somewhere I would add me a fuel pressure gauge. But it uh anywhere on a Holly carburetor. Your best to stay about six to six and a half pounds. Now, if you're racing and you feel like you need seven, but seven's high. It, it's, it's teetering at seven. Some of them will hold seven with no problem. Some of them won't. So I like to run mine about six, six and a half. And when you think about it, if you're running an electric fuel pump, it's so much more volume coming in because a mechanical pump, you figure the motor is running off of the camshaft. So the motor has to turn two complete revolutions to pump one squirt of gas out of it. So with an electric pump, you're just steadily getting volume in it continually. And not that a, a mechanical pump can't work good, but it's just, there's no way it can it can run with an electric pump. It just, you're turning two, two times of the crankshaft. In other words, you're getting 
4,000 pulses at 8,000 RPMs, basically. But with electric pump, you're a solid fuel, just solid line of fuel, and it's just a, it, it takes less fuel pressure, basically, with a with electric pump. As long as you've got the right line sizes, the fuel pre, uh, fuel level correct on the pump, I mean, on the carburetor, you should be in good shape. And these, car, these here are so much better when it's a returnable uh, regulator. It's just night and day's different than this. Night and day. I had one of these on one time on my son's S10. He had a V8 S10. It was pretty pretty bad boy. And we kept running this, and it ran good for a while. And then all of a sudden, it just started. The, the fuel pressure went high. It went up to about 8 or 9 PSI. And I thought, what in the world? Kept checking the regulator, checking it. And it was the actual pump. And when you take the bottom of the cover off them old Holly pumps, they had a piston inside there, and it was a bypass piston. Well, a little bit of trash had got in, a little bit of dirt, and it stuck the piston. So the pressure just went sky high. It was pumping like 14 PSI, where, it, where normally it wasn't. You know, it was regulated with the piston to run a, run around 7, 8 PSI. And it couldn't control it. it, it you know, it might have been 9 or 10 PSI, but this could only control so much. When it got up there like pumping 14, this little regulator couldn't control the, the fuel pressure. Now, this one will control it regardless. It might change a little. You might have to adjust a little, but it will it will not let it go crazy. Uh, and it won't creep. And that's a big deal with these. I mean, it, it's just been a common problem for years. And these are just a much better engineered fuel pressure regulator. Now, the other thing I want to hit on, I'm, I'm going to do a video on degree in the camshaft, but this ain't it. I just want to show you something else that I call the performance issue. This is a big block, this is a small block. So it's not apples for apples here. So what, but what I want to show you is where the marks are lined up. This, this is a solid hub aftermarket fluid dampener, racing dampener. This is a factory eight inch dampener that, that in the day it was probably one of the best dampers we could get as far as controlling vibration of the engine and all. Now, it's mounted in a rubber elastic type material. They press the hub over this inner hub with this rubber on it. Well, they get old, and when they finally get old enough, they'll actually, this outer ring, which has got your timing mark on it right here, will actually slip. This will slip on this one. And usually it goes retarded, and you really, if you've got a performance issue and you're thinking, man, my motor's just just not up to where, where it used to be. It's like getting sluggish, respond sluggish, and not running good. You can check the timing, and if the timing ha if it has moved, then you know something's changed. Chances are this, this dampener here has slid on. I've seen it over and over. When I degree my motors in, before I degree it, I will actually find top dead center, and I'll show you this on a motor later. I'll find top dead center, which is right here on the degree wheel, and I'll I'll get me I'll set me a piston stop up in the in the head, or if I've got it off, I'll just use a, a probably a, a piston stop on top of the block if I'm building the motor, and I will turn this around and find top of the center. It'll a piston stop will stop here, and then it might stop here. Well, you'll take these two and you'll add them together and divide it and say what well, needs to be at forty. And you'll find top dead center. And once you find exact top dead center, then you need to see where your actual timing mark is pointing to your pointer. This timing mark is zero. And it's got to be pointed right at zero or at the pointer. This one here, particular one's got it on the dampener. Where this one has it on a tag. It'll have 10, 20, 30, whatever, 40 degrees, maybe 10 below, 10 after. And you want to make sure that lines up with top of this center, or this lines up with top of this center. Whichever dampener you got, the zero needs to be on top of this center when the piston is dead on top. Now, I've checked these many a time, and very seldom they're on the money. Very seldom. And if it's four degrees off, you think you're running 38 degrees, you're running 34 degrees, or you're running 42. That's a bad deal there. You need to degree your dampener. You need to make sure when you're at top dead center on the motor, use I, I like to use my degree wheel. 
You might be able to figure another way to do it with a piston stop if it just barely touched the piston and just rock it back and forth and see if you're on each side, you're about the perfect amount from top to center to the mark. Now that, that takes some doing. I'm not going to tell you to do that because I always do it when I build my motor. I use the degree wheel and the degree wheel mount right here too. See on the dampener? It'll mount right up on it. And that way you can get top dead center and then you can put your, a lot of these aftermarket, they have aftermarket pointers and they'll bolt to the time of cover and then they'll slide back and forth to make it have adjustment to get it dead on top dead center. Then you know when you set your timing, when you're timing light, you set your timing, your timing light, you know that if it says you're on 34 degrees, you're on 34 degrees. And, and that's, that's real important, real important, especially with nowadays you've got cylinder heads that are fast burn combustion chambers and you'll only run about 32 to maybe 34 degrees where we used to with the old Chevrolet chambers and the Ford would run 38 most of the time. Some of them run as little as 30 and 32 because the chambers are so small and they're shaped good. You get a lot of swirl in the combustion chamber. It burns faster. So if it burns faster, you need less time and lead. <coughs> so, excuse me. So that's a, that's a big thing. It really is. So always think about that when you're degreeing the cam. Don't just degree the cam. Make sure your dampener is set at the same time with the pointer. You know, where it's, it's lined up on zero. Then when you go to set the time, you're right on the money. See, these are these are solid hub here. This is all one piece. And this one is, is mounted in elastic. There's a lot of them that even the performance ones are mounted in elastic. And uh, just always keep that in mind. It, I've seen it on a lot of different dampeners. That see them come apart. I've seen them slip. Now, we got a... This is this is a, a performance type timing chain of gear, but this is something else you got to look for when the motor gets older. And if you're running, especially guys that run uh, a nylon gear on the top instead of a steel gear, I mean, I see people doing that still. And when they get older, they will jump. I've seen them jump when I was working at Ford Motor Company for about 30 years. I they'd come in, they'd be real sluggish, not running good, and they'd be jumped to two. And 90% of the time, it always jumped a tooth late if it hadn't stripped the gear. But uh, what what we would do is we'd put a vacuum gauge on it, which is just a standard. Let me grab one here. This is a standard old vacuum gauge. Now, these motors what would, didn't have a cam in it, not a racing cam, just stock. And generally speaking, back then, we'd see 17 to 18 inches if the motor was performing properly. You'd have about 17, 18 inches of vacuum in part. Now... When that, when that, when it jumped a tooth, one tooth off, it would still run. And you'd see the vacuum drop way down. It, it'd probably come in running around 12, 13 inches of vacuum instead of 17 or 18. And that was a pretty much a dead giveaway. As long as you didn't have a restricted exhaust or something else or something crazy. There's, there's so many things you've got to think about. You've got to think out of the, out of the box sometimes. I had one come in one time and I set the timing on it. And I, I come back, and the timing had moved. And I thought, man, is the dampener slipping? What's going on? And, and it was a Ford. And at the time, it had it had it it was an older motor, and it had valve stem seal that was sucking up in the oil pump. The distributor had a hollow pin in them back then. Most of them did. And it had actually twisted the oil pump almost in two, and it actually broke, finally had broke the actual pin. And it... If you didn't look, you you know, you wouldn't ever notice it because you just couldn't see through the end of the hollow pin that held the gear onto the bottom of the distributor. Just crazy things that you never see. I, I've been doing it so long, I saw so many crazy things, and some of it wore me out. I ain't gonna lie to you. But anyway, if you if you can ever run, if you can run a good chain and gear when you put your motor together, don't run. Don't run a, a nylon gear. I, I remember talking to a Ford engineer, and I said, why'd y'all ever put these in there? We replaced them. They got around 100,000. They all just about jumped. And uh, and they said, well, it's quieter. I said, well, can you hear that timing gear I just put in that motor? And he looked at me and smiled and walked off because he knew it was just a bunch. They do it because they, they know it'll wear out. 
These gears here will run. I've seen them run half a million miles. I mean, I've seen them three, four hundred thousand all the time. People that took care of their car. Okay. Uh, also, let's see what else I wanted to show you. Remember the the vacuum on a good motor, 17, 18 inches. Now, if you got a camshaft in it, it's gonna it can range anywhere from six or eight inches all the way up to twelve or fourteen. It's according to how how much camshaft you got in it, how much load separation, intake closing is real important. Uh, and and in, in one thing intake. When you go to buy a camshaft, I know I'm getting all around different things right now, but when you go to buy a camshaft, look at it careful how they write it up. If it says it needs 10 to 1, it needs 10 to 1 minimum. If it says it needs 12 to 1 compression, it's closing the intake late and probably got a lot of overlap. And you definitely want to, if you put if you put the biggest cam in a motor and and then you you lose performance you just you haven't changed compression or anything and you just it just comes a dog and uh that's why because you've lost the compression you're probably down from nine to one to seven to one if not more or even even motors that set ten to one could be down to seven to one so compression runs directly with the camshaft when you change that cam you need to know where your compression is there ain't no doubt about it Okay, one other thing I want to get on is, is let's see. Guys, uh, later on we're going to shoot some videos on degree in the cam, and it's going to be a little while. I've got to get some parts, but I will do something on rod length. This is off of a top fuel car, but we'll do rod length. They measure rod from center wrist pin to the center of the big end of the rod. That's how you measure the rod length. And we're going to get in that. I'll show you what it does. And I'm going to, I, hopefully I can do an in-depth video on it and sh actually show you what it does to the piston speed. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's just a, a quick video and just general. And uh, I hope you all guys will like and comment and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try my best to answer it. And uh, if you have any good ideas for a video, please leave them down below. And uh, as we get these parts in, I'll try to do more and more videos. And uh, I hope y'all have a great day and talk to you later.